All right. So the recording has started. Today is March 11th, 2021. This is Kathleen Butler, and I'm helping facilitate the SRA's SRT practitioners meeting. And tonight we have as our guest speaker, uh, Deborah Ramos, and uh, she'll be offering us a topic and some other things. But before we get into that wonderful discussion, I just wanted to welcome everyone to this uh, meeting and let you know that since it is being recorded, it will be on um, the YouTube. Oops. There we go. I'm moving it to speaker only. Okay, so it's going to be on the SRA's YouTube and uh, they'll have it, usually it takes a few days, sometimes up to a week before you see it posted, um, but they try to do it very quickly. Just a reminder that they're volunteers and they're doing an awesome job. Um, and I want to thank Veronica and her team for helping us with that. So um, this is organized by the SRA. Just wanted to be very clear about this. This is not my personal meeting as a teacher. This is through the SRA Board of Directors offering this as a community panel for your practitioners, consultants, teachers, the worldwide community. And this is offered free to you at no charge for our community members. And just uh, myself and Deborah are volunteering our time to be here tonight. Although there may be moments where everyone is muted know that there will be time when you can offer your comments and we encourage you to make comments. You can either do it in the chat box if you're not sure about your English and you'd rather type it, um, but you can also unmute, raise a hand, and I'll be watching for that while Deborah is talking and there will be specific times when you can ask questions. A couple of announcements before I introduce my guest. I think the only one that people have been asking about are charts. Where do you get new charts? A real obvious way is to retake a class. Um, just know that retaking is one way to really get, you know, to fine tune your skills. Even if you've been doing it for 20 years, retaking a class can be lots of fun. And there's those little nuggets that you find when you retake or the intensive skills, you also get a new set of charts there. You can order a new set of charts from the SRA. If you're international, you may want to email them and ask for them to include the international first class postage instead of priority if, if priority is not an issue for you because it's slower, but it's a lot less money for the international packages. Um, otherwise, you can uh, let me know if those don't work for you. We can find another way uh, for you to connect and get the information you need. All right, so I have the privilege, as I said today, uh, to speak with Deborah Ramos. She's a Venezuelan attorney as well as SRT uh, teacher. So she's an attorney specializing in international contracts from the Andres Bello Catholic University in Caracas, Venezuela. And from her childhood, she's always been attracted to the spiritual realm. Um, her mother taught her the first steps in teaching and the reading of tarot cards, which I also find fun. <laughs> uh, metaphysics, so tarot cards, metaphysics, and communication with the angels. So after suffering the loss uh, of her first pregnancy, Deborah continued her spiritual growth and search that led to her encounter in 1997 with spiritual response therapy which was created, as we know, by Robert Dessler. Deborah's been working with this te technique since 1997, and the profound changes that she's found through SRT um, and what it produced for her has led her to the conviction that she had to make to reach as many, many people as possible. So she decided to become a consultant and then a certified teacher of SRT in Venezuela and then the United States. She's been teaching since the SRT since the year 2000. 
And then she took SPR class with Robert in 2001, and she also teaches spiritual restructuring. So in this way of harmonizing the spiritual quest, she finished her studies in Japanese Reiki. She's traveled to Spain to become a Jende Reiki master from Healing Associations of Reiki with Master Hiroshi Doi. Uh, living in the United States, she became a certified angel practitioner, medium, angel therapy practitioner, certified angel card reader, master angel, archangel life coaching, and crystal healer. So she has a lot of tools on her belt. <laughs> So I'm glad that she could, uh, she also teaches intensive skills for the SRA as well as her SRT skills. She's been on a lot of committees. When I was the director at the SRA office, she also helped us with our contracts and some other legal papers due to her expertise. So before we get into the uh, questions and so forth, Deborah's going to do an opening meditation for us. So if you haven't been muted, please do so. So Deborah, go ahead. Okay. So let's take a moment to take a deep breath. And exhale. Let's take another one. And when you exhale, Release any tensions, any stress or worries from the day. And let's take this moment to align with the beautiful energy of spirit. This beautiful energy of unconditional love and light. And we want to thank, say thank you spirit for all your knowledge of your wisdom all your unconditional love and thank you for working with us and through us, especially using this wonderful technique of SRT, allowing us to open the space for our own healing and for the healing for anyone that wants to get healing during the session healing that they're doing for themselves with their high self and our high self. Thank you, Spirit, for allowing us to understand this content, assimilating, updating all the information that we need to get updated, our spiritual committees get updated, and they can use this knowledge for every session that we open for these people that want to work in themselves. Thank you, Spirit. Amen. When you're ready, open your eyes and go back to your room. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for that beautiful meditation. It's very nice to get centered and to feel gratitude. You're welcome. For me, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation, really. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I was, um, you were one of the top names on my list. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so before we get into our actual topic, I wanted to ask you some questions so we can get to know you a little better. Mm -hmm. And I would like to chat about your experience as a spiritual leader and teacher. So mm -hmm. what started you on your spiritual path? Well, as, as you say before, um, I grew up in a house where these kind of topics were taught, even though I was raised as a, as a Catholic and I studied with the nuns. <laughs> so imagine, you know, go stay home and learn all this information about past life. I remember my mom having books about past life. And, and always they, my mother and my dad said, you know, whatever we talk here, stay here. Because you know, it was the 
80s, you know, it's not that we can talk about all this topic in that time. And especially if you're in a, in a Catholic school, <laughs> no? So, but, you know, it was very interesting to, to, to learn and talk about these topics in my house. And you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's like uh, my soul was preparing itself for what was coming because I, when I was 17 years old, I was diagnosed with cancer. So one of the things that helped me a lot was meditation. So I believe that meditation is, is such a wonderful tool because it's, it allows you to go inside your yourself and find a lot of information that you maybe you don't know that is there. Additionally, the connection with the divine, you know, to help you to understand that you're not alone in this journey, that we are with spirit, we have we are our committees, spiritual committees. And during the, the time, um, especially working with the affirmations in my house with my mom, and I used to meditate every day to talk to myself who said you are healed you're gonna be healed you know and you're gonna start working together as they you supposed to work and I used to do that every day besides of course my my treatment because as we always said you know all the spiritual work and now of, of course talking about SRT it's a supporting tool we never change it for the doctors or anything because we know doctors right but it, it was a wonderful support for me, um, the meditation. And um, it's interesting because uh, I always say this in my classes, uh, when I got sick in my family, nobody was with cancer before. So when the doctor said, okay, who in your family uh, had been diagnosed with cancer or, um, or died for cancer? My parents see each other and no one. So this is the first time. So when I learned SRT and we talk about the inheritance program and we talk about that we don't inherit um, illnesses, in my class, I said, there you go. There's the answer <laughs> that we were in for, for many years that why, you know, in my family, nobody was with cancer. So when, and when Robert went to Venezuela to teach us about the, the restructuring form, you know, the brain restructuring form, and I did my my basis, negative concrete basis, and I saw that I said, "Wow, now I understand why my soul had that challenge to have that in so early age." Well, beautiful. We're we're really glad that you had that insight to heal yourself because we've all been blessed by it, as well as of course yourself. So how do you take that, that experience? You've already shared a little bit of that. How do you take your own experiences and develop that into your teaching? Well, um, besides those experiences that I have, uh, normally, I, especially when I talk about Char 19, uh, is that part that even though we're clearing so many programs, because we have this wonderful tool, SRT tool, you know, that, uh, technique that allow us to open the space so the soul can do their own healing, you know, they do the job that they need to do. But, you know, in order to manifest the change that we want, sometimes or most of the time, you need action to from, from yourself, from the person. So to, to achieve the changes that they, the soul, the person wants, they have to take actions and chart 19 helps us a lot. So normally what I do is I, I always think that those experiences that I have, because I was two years with chemo, one year in, 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 in the vein and the other year was in pills, all the experience that I have, I apply in, in, as an example. I put examples of things that I felt, I, things that I did for affirmations and a lot of stuff. And also, um, I, I have in my teachings the experiences with my clients, you know, no, of course, no saying the names, but I think that examples in a class, especially when you are, um, you know, active, a consultant, even you are a teacher, it, I always recommend, you know, it, do your sessions because that's enrich your knowledge to help others to understand when you're teaching. So 
I, I use a lot of examples in my classes, not only from my own experience of SRT, that every time that I open my charts and start working on me or, or working with a client, it's amazing how every soul is so different and how the soul, you know, work in a different way. So I, we are always learning all the time. So the examples, I think that helps a lot to understand all this vocabulary of SRT for when the person is in the first time, you know, in contact with this. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, Robert also was, when I'd ask him sometimes, well, how, how do you, you know, what's your, on, when you teach, what do you think is one of your most important things to do? And he said examples and not just from the present life, but also doing examples, like examples of what does this program look like? But yeah, mm -hmm. then when you make it personal, you can say, well, this is what that might look like. It can be really helpful. So wonderful. You also had a topic that you wanted to talk to us about. And that topic is being open to positive changes and self-empowerment with spiritual response therapy. And what an amazing tool this is. Where do you want to start with that topic? Well, the first thing that I would like to start is we as a practitioners, and when I say practitioner, you, you, you know, it's everybody, not only the certifies or not only the teachers, all of us that work with SRT, um, we need to understand that even though uh, SRT is a wonderful tool, when we work with this wonderful technique, it's not to fix anybody. Because the power, and, and I will say to, 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 to my students, empower your client. Understand that they have the energy to work in themselves, that how they're working with their beliefs, perception, and judgment. Because we can clear a lot, you know, as I said, to clear a lot of stuff. But if the person doesn't check the negative pattern in the, in, that they're working on it, or they don't try to change the belief and perceptions um, um, and judgments that they have, it's going to be more difficult to find the change that they want. So sometimes the client doesn't want to understand that they have the power. It's, it's, it's more easier to... It's easier for them to say, oh, it's no, somebody did something and that's why they can do this. But I think the an important thing, thing about SRT is that the client understand, and we, of course, we first, that they have the power to do it, you know, that they can understand. And that's why when, when we ask High Cell Spirit, can you create this program with our research? Robert used to say, it's because the details is maybe it's not important, but when you have to research, the person needs to understand what's going on. Maybe that's why this giving you the information, the, the researching, so the person can understand, okay, so this is the same thing that I'm, is happening to me in this life. And I'm sure that anybody in this meeting can tell you that you're doing a clearing for somebody. The person say, are you sure that's past life? Because this is what I'm having right now. So... The interesting part is to, to empower the client, you know, saying you can change this, you know, you can, and that's why the, the release of the statement is so important for, you know, helping the client to understand they can change these patterns. And also we as a practitioner to understand that even though we open this space for the soul of this client to do the, the healing, so they can do the healing, um, we are not responsible for, for the results, you know, when people say, oh, you know, I did a cleaning, but this didn't change. Okay, how are you managing your energy? How you be using your words, right? And also we need to respect, and, and we as a practitioner, we have to remember that the soul, nothing happened that the soul doesn't allow it to happen. So the soul is gonna have the time for do the healing. And we can, we have to respect that. So I and the the person uh, the client needs to understand that I wish it was the magic one that you just you know with the pendulum and that everything disappeared. But no, sometimes you have to put the effort, you know. And and high self show it so clear, you know. When you for I'm gonna give you an example. One day I was doing a cleaning for a lady, and she she told me I would like to ask something. Uh, I want to know why I, I haven't 
it, it haven't been possible for me to work in my career in the United States. She's from South America. So I went to chart one, I asked myself, you know, get information, what's going on? If she had any blocks to work in her career? And he says, no. I said, oh, okay. And so I told her, no, what, what do you do? And she said, I'm a cosmetology. Oh, okay. So I asked, Spirit, okay, give me some clues, you know, so I can tell her, you know, what, what she can do, what is the next step. They sent me to chart 19 and they showed me take action. And I heard very clear, ask her what she had done to work in her career in the United States. So I went to chart one, I checked who's giving me information before telling anything just in case and go to chart three to check the level of consciousness. And I said, no, you know, new paradigm, okay. So I, I, I asked her, oh, well, you know, the only thing that they're telling me here to tell you is take action. Uh, I, what have you done to, um, to uh, work in your career? And she started laughing, she said, oh, nothing. You know, I had to re renew so many things. I had to take classes. I know, no, I don't want to do it. So that shows you, you know, very clear, spirit clear. Say you, okay, you want a clue? I'm going to give you a clue. And send you exactly what you need to uh, explain to the client that, that you're in charge, you know, it's, it's up to you to do it. Right, taking the next action. A lot of times spirit says they can't just sit on the couch. You have to <laughs> take action. So I actually put on uh, a chart, um, you know, well, it's actually on chart 19, as you know, you know, action. What do they need to take action? So we can find that in different ways, uh, a reminder. So yeah. excellent. Yeah, and we are in charge of our own healing. I think what you said earlier made me think of, you know, as practitioners, I've had, um, you know, I've had clients who have passed on and family members that have passed on. And the reminder to me is I'm really glad that I'm in charge of my own healing because nobody can make me stay if I feel like the transition is where my healing is taking me because that transition into the spiritual, leaving the physical is a healing process. That is a healing process opportunity but we often don't think of it that way but it is still part of our healing path and opportunity for healing so thank you for those reminders sir did you want to take any questions or do you have more you would like to talk about right now no, i think that's some question maybe they want to add something yeah so is there anyone who wants to add questions before we move on to some more topic with deborah I'm just checking the box here. Okay. So one question I'd like everyone to think about is how are you taking charge of your own healing process? Because even though you're doing clearing work, there might be something such as, it could be as simple as having an intention mm -hmm. or it could be as direct as an intention followed by an action like finding a new doctor or deciding that um, you're going to be more involved. So think about those things too, as we branch into how SRT creates self-empowerment. So how else do you feel SRT has created self-empowerment, Deborah? Yeah, I, I think that the base of understanding how the programs are created, that is according with the perception, belief, and judgment that we do. And that's gonna help us to have control of what I'm thinking, you know, what I'm believing, why this is not changing in my life, what is behind this. Um, so, and you know, it's, it's okay that sometimes you, you find yourself in a perception or judgment or something because this is part of being human. but is to change it is the important thing. If you notice yourself uh, that you're doing uh, a judgment or perception or something uh, that can be discordant to your life and can block you, just change it, you know? And, and if you feel that you just not only the clearing, but you need to work with statements, clearing statements, or you need to use the 
affirmations. Uh, I always recommend the affirmation. The affirmations are very powerful because it, it helps you to feel it and hear yourself, you know, that you can do this, uh, whatever you, you statement you put in your affirmation, you know, and it's, it's going to uh, put an environment in your, in your mind that that can be possible. Even in the moment it's not, that is you, you preparing your energy to manifest that, that you put in an affirmation. So I think that that is empowering, you know. Um, also, um, another way, for example, in when we talk about Child 19, the octave of learning, any project, any um, uh, change that you want in your life, any learning, you can check and go to Child 19 and check, okay, in what step am I in this project? And is any blocks that is not allowing me in these steps to, to achieve what I want. Maybe I need to uh, reset the goals or maybe I need to see why I'm not willing, uh, willing to change something. So it's like a, you recognize that you're in charge of your own destiny. And that's why we don't see future with SRT because the future is gonna be done according with your decisions today. And that's why Robert said, you know, you can predict the future with SRT. It's just depending on your decisions that you do today or whatever you need to, you want to work today is that you're gonna create your own future. So that's what I think that is, is help us to, or empowering, empowering us to understand how to work with SRT with all these charts uh, especially even when we do the, the, the one restructuring, when we, we ask ourselves to change the negative concrete basis and change it to, to the positive, it's, it's a very important change because you can understand how to work with your energy, why understanding where you come from, and then, then you're going to define where you're going to move forward. Yeah, one thing I think about with the brain restructuring is you're taking the operating system of your computer, your brain, you're taking that operating system and you're switching it out for a new operating system. So you find the negative stuff and say, whoa, no wonder I want to get rid of that operating system. And then you put in a new one so that you can make choices based on that new expression. So it's really beautiful work. And I wondered, why don't we have um, the, the people today on the call, why don't we have them check to see if they have any octaves of learning that are blocked? Mm -hmm. You know, so we can just have you check, yes or no, do you have any octaves of learning that are blocked? Now, this is in general, it's not specific to a project. If you have a project, you can make your question specific. For example, I could say, do I have an octave of learning blocking me to writing a book or cleaning out my closet or, you know, it can be real practical stuff or, or other things, but in general, you can have octaves of learning blocking you. And uh, Deborah has been talking about chart 19 and that is really something that's very powerful to check. So why don't you go ahead and ask that if you get, you do have octaves of learning that are blocked. You simply ask if they can clear them without research. Mm -hmm. You know, that may be all you need to do tonight. Otherwise, you can make a note of which one um, and, and clear it up. But when we're in a group environment, usually there's a lot that gets cleared without research. And let me know if you have any questions in the chat box about, um, as she talks about chart 19, brain restructuring, these are transformational uh, parts of SRT, which is what Deborah's talking about here. So, um, I mean, all of it's transformational, obviously, but chart 19 can be used kind of as a counseling tool about where do you go next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Deborah? Um, yeah, another, another, um, another uh, part of the SRT system that work excellent for empowering and defining where to go is chart two, for example. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful chart. Um, 
that, you know, show the challenges that the soul, you know, wants to work on and, and also, you know, uh, clear them, you know, clear those, those, uh, those uh, blocks or those challenges so the soul can, can learn from love and not from, from pain mm -hmm. and see to, how to move forward to this too. So um, I really, I, I don't know if, if, if you can notice, but I'm really in love with this technique. I love SRT because I see um, how wonderful results, you know, you can see in people and, and also how they can change really and empower their life when they understand exactly how or why their, their life is right now in the way it is. And it's not only because present life, it's past life, and you have the opportunity to change it, to clear and, and change it. Um, and because you know you can be um, decided, you, you can decide to change your life, but if you have that block, you don't know that it's there, it's difficult, more difficult the change and the learning process. So, so SRT allow us to start taking the problem from the root, as Robert used to say, you know, take the, the, the problem, take it off from the root, right? So. Yeah. So with chart two, a lot of times it sounds like you do a similar thing. I just might check if there's even nothing to clear, you know, like maybe I don't have any programs or anything. I'll, I'll after I prep, I'll say, well, is there any area on chart two that I should, that would be good for me to focus on or that needs some fine tuning? Mm -hmm. uh, it usually goes to play and recreation. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like get out of the office. So people do that, you know, you can always go to chart two. Is there a hint on the chart as to what would be a good focus for you? Even if it's not blocked, it helps you with your intention. Right. Yeah, exactly. So not to give you a guidance of more or less what, what you can work on that moment, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Anyone have questions for Deborah at this point? I have. Yeah, go so ahead. It, um, so if somebody's procrastinating for a long, long time, Although I've done one one of the clearings, but uh, it didn't move. So I obviously at the moment I can't remember whether I used chart two or nineteen. Perhaps I used chart two, but I didn't use chart nineteen. So perhaps that will help him. Is that correct? Well, one of the things that I will do when I have a specific issue is to mm -hmm. go to chart one first. Because first, I, yeah, I, yeah don't, I, I, we never assume. So we ah. go just to chart one and ask uh, high self or spirit, if you work with spirit, um, is any reason or program that is supporting the procrast in your in your case, uh, mm -hmm. procrast procrastination? Because uh, um, the same problem or issue, let's call it issue better. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, could, it could be supported by different programs in different charts. Okay. So the first thing that I, I recommend to do is, or what I do is, I look on chart one first one. and I allow flow. You know, I ask Spirit, okay, show me if there is any reason or program that is supporting mm -hmm. this situation. When I say yes, okay, in what chart can I go? And it gonna, if, if something for an, uh, any reason send you to chart two or chart 19, it, it's great, it's great, it's fine. You just ask for what is the item and, and clear it. Right, uh, but never uh, just because we're talking about chart two or chart nineteen. Um, you know, no assume. I, I recommend that just go to chart one. Go to chart. And you know, after they send you to the chart, you clear it. Go back to chart one. I ask if any other program or reason mm -hmm. that is behind this situation. Maybe it's gonna tell you. Yeah, it's another one. So okay, on well, what chart I go now? And they're gonna send you to another chart and go back and forward until they tell you that everything is clear. And you can change a number chart, you know, in what percentage all this program was clear. Right, I like to do, yeah. What percent will they be free of the problem is also something to look at. 
Uh -huh. yeah, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to allow you to go deeper in whatever is behind this situation. Okay, now in, in case of a pro procrastinating, for sure, the person is going to need to work consciously with that too, you know, because maybe there is progress behind, but maybe they send you to chart 19 and start saying, uh, I don't know, practice ordinary thinking probably, or, you know, in certain way to be more organized or, but it's, you know, the base of the situation is look for the problems first. Yeah, I actually once had a client with um, a lot of procrastination and I was thinking about all the things in my head that would make total sense, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it, it was really a self-punishment program. That's all it was, it was self-punishment program. So it wasn't, you know, the other things. Yeah. Janice has a question. Remember to unmute yourself, Janice. You're still muted. There we okay. go. Can you hear me now? I yes. Can. Yes. Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for volunteering to give us this wonderful experience tonight, Deborah. Thank I have a question for you concerning um, what the, the question that was asked about procrastination. What if we follow through the clearing process, going to chart one and keep asking for the significant core reasons, significant core, core issues that are causing this, this issue and challenge with procrastination. And let's say we get done, do a, what we think is a complete clearing. Mm -hmm. And let's say chart 19 was not one of those charts picked up because maybe we have a subconscious block to knowing that and part of us just is working around it. What do you think about the possibility of at that point saying, you know what? because I find myself doing this sometimes. You know what, High Cell? Chart 19's got some powerful stuff in there. What do you think? Is there some value for us to go to chart 19 and check something out there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, then I go to chart 19 and say, okay, so what has part of me been blocking? What do you want to show me? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, here. And, and then, I, then, then I take it from there. So sometimes if we know something of value, part of us I think can be very secretive and might find little ways like a self-punishment program for us not to even get to the chart and we don't realize that we're being blocked internally. Have, what do you think about that? Yeah, you can, uh, chart 19, 19 is one of the charts that you really don't have to wait for myself to send you. So if you feel that, you know, the client could get any benefit to working with, with the, any of the items on the chart, of course, yes, just ask you know what percentage is the benefit for the client for something from the I these items and it says more than 100 percent go ahead where well, show me uh what can uh what can we we see here for this client yeah definitely and you know one of the things when we're doing the the, the clearings uh before when they say okay uh, it's, it's almost time to do the map up one of one chart they can send you is this one the, anything else to be done is anything else that needs to be done. And even they, you know, the, our protocol says it can be chart seven, it can be chart 32 because it's gonna send you to organs and glands or any other items that we have in the protocol. Why not? Sometimes happened to me a lot. I said, no, chart 19, because it's like, a, okay, you know, don't forget about this. But if you know that this chart can help because we have to, we have to believe in our guidance. Or in, you know that connection when we're doing the the work, you are connected with your high self, with spirit, mm -hmm. and it's gonna sometimes. I'm sure you guys have this experience when you receive information before they show it on the chart, and you just confirm, right? In the same example that I gave you about this lady with the job, I I say let me look it up because I heard clearly, but you know because that's part of the work when we're clearing so much. Um, you will start receiving information in a different ways. Of course, we never assume, okay, check who's giving you information, right? And it can send you to this chart or you, if you feel that the person is gonna get benefit of any item of this chart, yes, as a, your high self and ask in what percentage the benefit for this, uh, this client to work in chart 19 and you say, yes, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Thank, Thank you, Janice. Anyone else have questions for Deborah? You can either uh, raise the hand on the panel 
I've been looking, or you can write in the chat box or unmute yourself and say, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to talk. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that Robert you always said is ask. <laughs> right, we don't ask enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Catherine, he always said, ask. Hi, how are you? Fine. Um, can you give us a, a good affirmation for practice? A good affirmation to practice? Um, let me see. What do you mean by practice? To practice uh, in any in any field that you in general you mean? Uh, maybe well, uh, maybe for me it, it could be anyone, anything. Uh, sorry, uh, but for the physical body. Okay. Um, I I am healthy. Oh, I'm prosperous. You know, I like to, to, to talk about in general, for example, uh, I live in, ab in abundance. Because remember, when we do affirmations, it's important to do it in first, uh, in pronoun, you know, first name, because you have, you have to do it, make it proper, make it yours. So you're gonna use I or my, also it has to be positive. We don't use negative words or, or the word no. Uh, and also uh, in present time, because the idea is to link uh, energetically this affirmation that you still, you, this situation that you want that is not in your life yet, but you want to link it with what you want to attract. So you want to do it in a present time because um, the idea is to prepare your, your mind and your body to receive that as it's, as it's there already. So for example, when, when I talk about abundance, abundance has, everything has to do with relationship, with health. It has to do, it's not only people think it's just money, but it's not. Abundance is, a, is more wider than, you know, that people think, you know, it's, it's health, it's um, relationships, uh, it's money, of course, so when I, I affirm my life is full of abundance, uh, you are, in the way that I see it is, you are, um, you have all the elements that you want different aspects of your life, for example. But it's important to, to take in consideration when you're doing affirmation, these elements, you know, to do it in, in personal pronoun, you know, that in using I or my, so you can, do it your own and in present time and also using positive words. So for example, if you a person wants to release their death, they don't use the word death, death in the in the word in, in the affirmation. You sort of different way. You have to do it in positive way. Okay? I don't know if that helps. You're welcome. I was going to say one that I use for my physical body that I was practicing actually just earlier today is um, my body remembers perfect health and in, it re and well it remembers perfect health how else did I do it and easily creates it moment by moment so I was just saying my body knows how to be healthy it has all that memory and it's creating it again, it's going to get, it is going to go back, to, you know, because I'm trying to, like Deborah said, make it in the present, so I didn't want to make it in the future, so mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to work on it for a minute, try to figure out, like, okay, I want it to be in this moment, my body isn't healing, it is healed, you see, that's how, it's right in the moment, healing is like, okay, it's still in the future, no, it's healed, it remembers right. it, and it does it, so just uh, to take her words and kind of put how I use that. Yeah, you know, you know, if you want examples of um, in certain way affirmation in the handout of uh, brain restructuring, the last two and two pages and a half of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the the handout, they are so beautiful statements that the ones that Robert 
you know, put in, in the handout in order that we can ask myself, the spirit, if I can use one of those to change the negative. There's, I don't know if you remember, guys, but it's, they're so beautiful. The one of, some of them are that you say, wow, this is powerful. You know, this is beautiful. That's right. Mm -hmm. So someone here has a comment that she's been sent to chart 32 a lot and the Godhead wants to help her with chart 32. And I know chart 32 does have to do about health and healing. So how do I know when looping is in effect? I'm not sure how that relates to chart 32 or what might being sent to chart 32 means. I think it would mean what is it, what is your high self asking you to look at on chart 32? What item? Uh -huh. Yeah, what item? There is a handout on chart 32 that comes with the advanced class and each item, including the groups, which are about why don't, aren't people healing? That's kind of a basis mm -hmm. of chart 32. So you can find all the elements of those groups on that handout as well. And you can even fine tune it by looking at that specific item. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I was the one that sent it. Oh, okay. If I if I can. Sure. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I do. It sends me to each, you know, the separate sheets with group one, group two, and it just seems to keep going. So I'm like, okay, is there some other questions I might need to ask? Is there am I I feel like I keep every time I'm doing a clearing, it keeps taking me to chart 32 and it and it takes me to each different one. But I'm wondering. It just seems like it keeps going and I don't know what looping looks like or sounds like. So I'm like, it might be in caught in a loop or is there, is the healing, um, if it, is it just layers, you know, or what does it mean? Like Godhead, because each time I go to clearing, it's always Godhead wants to help me. And then it's always chart 32 and we just keep going and then, you know, so I'm just kind of wondering what else might I ask or what else might I be missing? I, I don't know. So that's kind of. Deborah, you want to have an answer for that? Um, I, if I can't understand correctly, you say that Godhead sent you to the chart. That's what you say. Mm -hmm. right. But not your high self. Not your high self. Well, right? no, I'm working with high self. And then I go to chart one and I'll ask what, you know, it can be cleared or what needs to be cleared. And then it'll say, God had, it'll tell me, you know how you go contact or help. I uh -huh, mean, um, yeah. and it'll say someone, you know, wants to help mm -hmm. me. And then I'll say, who wants to help? And it'll say, God had. So I am working with spirit, but then it says, God had wants to assist help me with something and it'll say and I'll say well with what and it'll say chart 32. Do you have your pendulum with you? Yeah. Would uh, if you don't mind me saying this Deborah. Uh, yeah yeah go ahead. Could uh, you just ask because when you get sent to Godhead or any of the beings on the inside of chart one it could be help just as you say but it can also mean you have blocks from beings at that level. Correct. And that would be creating the looping that you're talking about. So the question I'd like you to ask is, do are you are you being blocked by beings at the Godhead? And see what you get. That's I'm mm -hmm. not saying that's the answer, but that's where I would start. Zero. Yeah. So then clear the reasons for the blocks. No, it's a zero percent. Oh. Oh, no, that was a yes, no. Oh, so you're just asked what percent are they blocking you? Okay. I, I asked what percent am I being blocked at the by beings at the Godhead? Okay, so do you have blocks at the Godhead? Not beings, but do you have blocks at the Godhead? So what it would be like programs at the Godhead. Zero. Um, I, what I do when I'm sent to something over and over is I go to chart one and I ask, why are you sending me back to this chart? And it sounds like you've already asked that question. I didn't, so ask, then, that, I didn't ask that specific question. I can, why am I being sent to this chart? Yeah. So why am I sent to this item over and over and you're not clearing mm -hmm. it completely? Yeah. It's, it's in, a, in a reason or program that is behind this, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, because normally when we get any of these um, committees or beings in chart one, 
one of the things that we do is we ask is need to be assigned on the clearing because maybe they're blocking you. That as Catherine said, so give it the other two options to see what's going on. And say that one more time. Am I being assigned? What was that? Yeah, it's, it's the, the committee that they show you is to be assigned to the person to help, you know, as you said, or it was to help you something, or needs clearing because it's blocking, you know, and it's, it needs to be clear because it's blocking you. As Catherine said, that is the, the committee is maybe it's blocking you or it needs clearing, you know? So maybe that's why they were trying to show you that then they need to be clear. If there is some kind of self-punishment going on for you, Nadia, that I I don't know why, but that is part of the, the what you're calling looping. The looping. So we don't have, uh, so I would go back, double check your source, um, and then ask why, are you, why is this pattern? Anytime you mention see a pattern, and if it's a negative pattern, you know, go to chart one. Is there a reason why this pattern keeps showing up? Mm -hmm. If you get yes, on what then on what chart will I find the reason? And when I asked that question, they sent me to chart five. You might get something different, but I would just suggest that. Mm -hmm. So you just checked for me just now. You said self punishment came up, and chart five came up. Yeah, chart five self punishment, which means you're motivated. You're you're motivated by self punishment, which was the reason you were getting caught up in what looked like looping. So you'd want to, you can that have- That so resonates. Oh okay. my God. So, it's like you're spinning your wheels. You're spinning Yes. Your wheels. And remember motivation means, what is your motivation? Well, I have to beat up on myself before I'm going to make a change. So yes. that's yes. what part 32 is about too, is creating that healthy changes as well. Yes, that so resonates. And that did come forward for me, but I was like, I kind of washed it off like, uh, okay, I'm aware that unless mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a subliminal conscious belief that unless it's challenging and difficult. That's right. It, mm -hmm. And that's self-punishment. That is. It can be easy and effortless, right? So yeah. you just, yay, what a breakthrough. Super uh -huh. transformed what... right here, transformation. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. why it keeps taking me to chart 32 because I need the healing because I'm self-punishing. <laughs> yeah. Or it's just, it could also be that the whole thing was just to get your attention. So now you'd have to go back and see what kind, what other information are they giving you now that mm -hmm. that's been worked out. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. That, that really helps. Yeah. This has been going on for months now. Wow. I think the last time we had a session you had, I asked about chart 32, you know, Okay. Yeah, it's been going on for a while, but yeah, I've had something in my life that's been going on and, and yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll go from there. Thank okay. you so much. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Uh, Deborah, we're at the end of our uh, presentation. I don't see any new questions in the box, uh, but we do have time for your closing meditation. So if you're ready for that and yeah. Okay. Then let's, let's do that. Okay, so let's take a moment and take a deep breath so we can feel this beautiful energy of spirit. Uh, we give thanks to spirit for this wonderful experience with this beautiful group of people and the great people that is going to listen this recording later. Thank you for all the questions, all the information that we got here. Thank you for all the knowledge and sharing to help us during the exercises and sessions for ourselves and for others. Amen. Thank you so much. As our closing moments, just to remind everybody, if you're an SRT teacher and you have a topic you'd like to discuss with CEC, feel free to contact the Education Committee. And also know that if your regular 
I mean, sometimes we get stuck and we want help clearing something. And if your regular people aren't available, um, no, you can call the SRA phone line. They have, uh, you can always see who's on duty on that phone line and what their hours are by going to spiritualresponse.com. So the phone line information is .com. And if you're interested in being a phone consultant, you'd need to be a certified consultant. And you can go there to that website as well to, to find out what's required. That's spiritualresponse.com. And if you're interested earlier, we mentioned charts. That would be spiritualresponse.org. Mm -hmm. That's where you would find teachers, consultants in your area, and product orders that you can do. So I want to thank everyone for coming. And Deborah, it's been a pleasure to have you. It's been thank great. You. And uh, in April, as I put in the chat box, I'll get that information to the SRA soon. And then we'll have a meeting in April. And, and then, of course, May and as we go on. So thank you all for participating in these meetings. I'm gonna thank you, guys for having me and, and for participating in this wonderful group. Thank you for the invitation, Catherine. Oh, you're welcome.